Dogs, the saddest seven most overlooked types in shelters. So, you're thinking of getting a dog. That's great. In these unprecedented and unsettling times, having a canine companion certainly makes sense. Walking your dog at least twice a day will force you to get up off the couch and do some exercise yourself. And the unconditional love a dog gives will boost your mental health and your sense of emotional well-being. But what sort of dog will you get? And where from? Will you, like many people, indulge in a pedigree pooch from a breeder? Or will you go down the far more noble route of adopting a homeless animal from a dog's home, animal sanctuary or the city pound? We've actually made a whole other video about why you should do exactly that. You'll find a link to that on screen here at the end of this video. We'll also put a link for you in the description underneath this one on YouTube. Now, let's say you are determined to give a rescue dog the second chance in life that it longs for. What then? Will you be one of the many people lining up for the easy option of a cute and cuddly puppy? Or could you do something special and adopt an overlooked dog who really needs you, one who may have been stuck in a shelter and cooped up in a cage or concrete cell for 20 plus hours per day, for months or even years? Or perhaps even worse, on the brink of being put down, simply because they are constantly overlooked, and the shelter needs to make space for cuter and thus more adoptable new arrivals. So, who are these overlooked dogs? And why do most would-be adopters just leave them to languish? We'll tell you that in just a moment. But first, welcome to our channel. If you're new here, tap or click on the subscribe button so that you will always be among the first to know, every time we upload a new video. Now, here is our list of the saddest seven types of dogs who so often get overlooked for adoption, plus our insights into the reasons why. Do stay tuned right until the end of this video, as the number one reason dogs get overlooked for adoption in shelters is just illogical, downright nasty, and a real shocker. 7. Quiet Animals While the adorable dog who vies for your attention at the front of the cage will certainly catch your eye, don't forget about the quiet and shy animals in the shelter. They might come across as standoffish simply because they're afraid and stressed by the racket and sensory overwhelm of the shelter environment. These animals usually come around and are more outgoing once you take them out of the shelter and they begin to feel safe and comfortable with you. 6. Special Needs Dogs These could be dogs who have been severely neglected or abused in the past. They could now be skittish and fearful, or initially aggressive and need special handling. Alternatively, dogs with physical limitations, injuries or disabilities could also be overlooked. For example, dogs who have had to have had one or more leg amputated. Many people want an easy-to-handle, low-maintenance dog who is fun and who will be there as an emotional support for them, not a dog who will need a lot of extra care and attention themselves. Probably only a few people have the time and even fewer have the inclination or commitment needed to be devoted to a special needs dog. And so, when searching online or checking out the canines in a dog shelter, they just walk on by, past these poor fellows. 5. Large Dogs Many people only have modest-sized homes and incomes. If you live in a small apartment with no garden, that's just not suitable for a big dog. If you live in a built-up area, even if there are public parks available nearby, the size of a big dog may frighten others, especially smaller dogs and their owners. This may lead to unpleasant incidents. So, where indeed can you give a big dog the exercise it needs, particularly if you don't have a large garden? Very few people have a country estate set in its own grounds. So, lack of suitable space for exercise means that most people, even those who would really like to adopt a large dog, have to be realistic and say no. There is also the issue of feeding costs. Large dogs eat a lot, and this costs a lot. Many people just can't afford the running costs associated with a big breed. In addition, there is the matter of lifespan. Larger dogs usually just don't live as long, maybe as little as 7 years depending on breed. That's much less than the 14 years you can expect from many small and medium-sized types of dog. So, with a big dog costing much more to feed and giving you far fewer years of companionship, someone doing the math might conclude that it's just not worth it for them, 
even if they did have the money and the space, inside and out, that a large dog needs. Added to this is the heartache when a beloved dog dies. Even losing a dog every decade and a half is hard enough. But every seven years, it takes a special kind of person to be able to deal with that. And so, yet another big dog stays stuck in a shelter. 4. Breeds with a bad reputation. Due to the very occasional isolated yet appalling incidents of mauling by one of their kind, whole breeds such as pit bulls and their smaller English cousins, Staffordshire Bull Terriers, are stuck with an undeserved bad reputation, and are therefore often unwanted by potential adopters. In many parts of the US and in all of Great Britain, pit bulls are simply banned by law. This is despite the fact that many devotees of the breed emphasize how gentle and protective they can be with small children, so much so that they are often referred to as a nanny dog. Many people remain unconvinced however. And where these breeds are legal, shelters usually have no shortage of pit bulls, staffies and other bully breeds waiting a very long time for adoption. 3. Senior Dogs Everybody loves a cute and cuddly puppy. Older dogs not so much. Well, often not enough to actually take one home and give it the love, stability and security it longs for in what should be its golden years. Maybe people worry that a mature dog won't be active enough to fit in with their lifestyle, which may include long walks in the countryside, or on the beach. Perhaps they fret about the dog falling ill and racking up a fortune in vet bills. But having said that, some dog shelters undertake to cover all veterinary expenses for the remainder of the dog's life, if you give a loving home to one of their older boys or girls. So, if you are concerned about the financial implications of adopting a senior dog, it is definitely worth asking if the dog shelter you are thinking of adopting from, actually does this. But most shelters don't, and so this is another factor which mitigates against the adoption of middle-aged and older dogs, and may mean that they either live out their remaining years pacing the concrete floor of their shelter cell or are simply put down because nobody is prepared to step up and give them a forever home. 2. Bonded Pairs A bonded pair is two dogs who have a very strong emotional attachment to one another. Perhaps they were street dogs who looked out for each other before they were rescued together. Or maybe they had the same owner for many years, for example, an elderly lady or gentleman who had to go into a residential care home or who passed away. And so, in the assessment of the dog shelter officials, it would be too traumatic to separate them, and they need to be adopted together. Rare indeed is the person who wants to adopt two dogs at the same time, especially when they are past the cute puppy stage, which bonded pairs invariably are. And so, these unfortunate animals languish in the dog's home, unloved by any owner for the remainder of their days, however long or short a period of time that may be, especially in a kill shelter. And at number one in our list of most overlooked dog types in shelters, it's black dogs. So-called, black dog syndrome, is actually a thing. It even has its own Wikipedia page. Black dog syndrome or big black dog syndrome is a phenomenon in which black dogs are passed over for adoption in favor of lighter colored animals. Animal shelters often use the term BBD, or big black dog, a shorthand to describe the type of larger, dark colored, mixed breed dog said to be typically passed over by adopters. Black cats have exactly the same problem. Research shows that this has been going on for at least 20 years. Back in 1998, a study of 1,468 shelter dogs, published in the Journal of the American Veterinary Medical Association, stated that the dogs most likely to be euthanized were black, whereas golden, gray and white dogs were more likely to be successfully adopted. A 2002 study published in the Journal of Applied Animal Welfare Science, of dog and cat adoptions in California animal shelters, also found that animals with a pure black coat were less likely to be adopted. And in 2010, research conducted by Jamie L. Liu for his PhD at Wichita State University attested to dogs with primarily black coats being euthanized rather than adopted. Then in 2013, a study of cat adoption rates published in the Open Veterinary Science Journal stated that results indicated that black cats, regardless of age or sex, require the longest time to adopt. They are followed by primarily black cats with other colors. So, what is going on here? 
Why are so many black dogs and indeed cats being overlooked by potential adopters and then ending up being put down? Some people believe that during the pet adoption process, some potential owners associate the color black with evil or misfortune, similar to the common superstition surrounding black cats, and this bias transfers over to their choice of dog. Additionally, many shelters feature photo profiles of their dogs on their websites. Because black dogs do not photograph well, lighter colored dogs have an advantage with potential adopters browsing the site. Furthermore, academic studies would seem to indicate that many people simply have an inherent bias against having a black animal as a pet, especially an all-black one. A 2013 study published in the journal Anthrazoos, a multidisciplinary journal of the interactions of people and animals, displayed photographs of dogs colored either golden or black, and with floppy ears or pointy ears. It found that, participants rated the golden dog significantly higher than the black dog on the personality dimensions of agreeableness, conscientiousness, and emotional stability. It also found a significant difference in ratings based on ear size and shape, indicating that people attribute different personality characteristics to dogs based solely on physical characteristics of the dog. And a study presented at the 2013 Conference of the International Society for Anthrozoology, that showed participants' pictures of cats and dogs of varying colors, found that white cats were considered the friendliest, orange cats second friendliest, and black cats least friendly. Among dogs, light-colored dogs were considered friendliest, brown dogs second friendliest, and black dogs least friendly. Darker pets were similarly judged less adoptable, and black dogs were considered the most aggressive. There do not appear to be any studies proving that these highly negative, often superstitious perceptions of black animals have any basis in fact. That, however, is of no consolation to the thousands of black dogs, and cats, who through no fault of their own are stuck in a shelter and maybe even sitting on death row. So there you have it, the saddest seven most overlooked types of dogs in shelters. To recap quickly, these are Quiet dogs, dogs with special needs Large dogs Dogs belonging to a breed with an often undeserved bad reputation Senior dogs bonded pairs and black dogs especially if they are large and have pointy ears perhaps you are watching this video because you are actively considering adopting a shelter dog well done indeed please just remember that some dogs need you a lot more than others the cute and the cuddly ones particularly the puppies will always be snapped up and quickly find a home but other types of dogs just don't get clicked on online that much and when most potential adopters visit a shelter, they just walk on by, past these perhaps more deserving or even desperate dogs, who may well have been languishing there for years. Or, who in the case of a kill shelter, could be just days or even hours away from being put to death by lethal injection. So, ask yourself, can you be the life-transforming or even life-saving hero such a dog needs? How about you ask your local shelter? Who needs me the most? Who has been stuck here the longest? Who is going to be euthanized next if I don't get them out of here now? Just don't be too surprised if they offer you a pair of big, black, pointy-eared, special needs, senior dogs from a breed with a bad reputation. We hope you found this video useful. If so, please like it and share it on your social media. And feel free to leave a comment below. If you're new here, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, and click on the notifications bell, then the word, all, to make sure you're alerted every time our new videos are uploaded. And you can now follow us on Facebook too. There is a link to our Facebook page in the description below. Meanwhile, if you're still in a video viewing mood and want to watch more right now, click on our channel name below to take you straight to our other recent videos and also below this video in the description section. You will find a link to our entire video library, with our most recent videos first, plus a second link to our videos grouped by theme in playlists. Or how about the two video suggestions we have just put on screen for you? Tap or click on one of those now.